What's up everybody, main fly guys here with another tutorial. Uh, today we are going to be doing some bigger flies. I've been getting a lot of questions about these flies. Um, and so I'm going to show you how I set them up and uh, hopefully you can learn a thing or two. Alright, so we have a 20 millimeter shank and some long, you know, seven, six inch uh, grizzly hackle fibers. And I'm gonna tie in two on each side. Okay, so I like them to just whatever, you know, I mean, I'm not a super stickler on having them stand perfectly vertical, even though these came out really well. <laughs> but I'm not a huge stickler on that. So following that, I just get them in securely. This is primarily for musky, so um, I tie everything in really, really well. Um, I have a little bit of silver flash mixed in with some red flash. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay half of it on this side. The silver flash, that looks good, is um, longer than the red flash. So, not by choice, but that's just the way that it is, so. All right, so I go down and then I'm gonna flip that over and then work back on this side. And again, I'm really making sure that I'm comfortable with my wraps. So now I'm gonna check it out, looks pretty good. Again, if you have like some errant ones, like these ones are a little high, you can just yank them down. Boom. All right, and then I'm gonna work to basically an eye length behind. Um, and now what I'm gonna do is add in my first bucktail. So here I just have a clump of white bucktail. And I want it to go about halfway down, about halfway down. Um, I don't like to keep the tips because they're very, very, um, I don't know what the word is, but they expand greatly. So I want this to stay relatively flat as it's the start. So I'm just gonna lay these tips down right before the eye there. Do a few loose wraps and I'm just gonna push down on the top, squeeze on the sides, push down on the top, squeeze on the sides. And then I'll spin it. There we go. That spin just kind of helps it get a 360 degree profile. And that is the back. So it's looking like it's pushed down quite a bit here for that, but it's not. This is actually quite, it's basically like that. So that's great. So I'm gonna clean up my uh, tips here and we'll move on to the next step. So to attach this piece onto the hook that we're using, I'm, this is a 40 pound piece of mono. I'm gonna slide it in like that. And then I have a bead, which you'll see in one second. Boom. And that's gonna be it. I'm just gonna have this one bead, that's it. All right, so here's our hook that we're gonna be using, the A-Rex, uh, what is it, 8378. And what I'm gonna do, here's a medium sized uh, rattler, and I am oops, gonna set it up right here. And your goal is to keep it directly on top of the hook. Once I get it so that it is on there, nice and secure, I take some super glue and put a liberal amount on the bottom on both sides. And then I'll just put some on the top just to keep those threads in place. And we'll spread it out. All right, so now I'm going to make a dubbing loop at the back of the rattle. And I'm gonna put in, since this is gonna be a primarily a red and white fly, I'm going to take some red ice dub and make a dubbing loop that's going to cover, that's gonna cover this rattle. All right, so I'm just spinning up my dubbing loop here and I'm gonna brush it out a little bit. 
Now the super glue should still be, and if you want to use Zappa Gap, that's fine too, but the super glue should be uh, pretty much done, so, um, or pretty close. In fact, I almost like to do it while it's still a little wet because what it does is enables this dubbing loop to stick and not slide, and not slide. So you're gonna do open wraps. These won't be touching for sure. Um, because of how many you're going to need. And so you just want to make a skirt out back there. Catch it. Okay. Because it would require such a long dubbing loop, I don't, um, I don't care if I make it up to here, but I need this back end to be covered. And I want it to be like kind of a little tail almost. You'll see it towards the end. So then what I'm going to do is come in to, to cover the front side. I'm gonna come and put a clump of that, uh, I'm gonna put a clump of that, whatever dubbing I'm using, I'm gonna put a clump on the front here. You'll see it when I do it on this side here. I'm just gonna lay it down right in the middle, catch it. Make sure that it's covering everything that I want it to cover. All right, and then I'm gonna flip it over and catch it. And you know, I could probably use uh, red thread to make this even better. Um, but it's, you'll see, it gets covered up pretty well, so. And then I'm just going to cinch that off. Boom, and again, because this is a musky fly, I'm gonna come in right here and drop it with some super glue. And that is how we're covering our rattler right there. Boom. All right, so now I have some small eyes here, some small weighted eyes. And I've noticed that with the, um, with the rattle back here, it gets a little heavy, so it will tip back when you're pulling it. And so to adjust for balance, so when you're pulling it, it will maintain a nice level, um, a really nice level profile. I have added these small eyes, these small weighted eyes, um, out front here, and these will pretty much be covered up. Um, and they need to be below the bend because we're gonna add something in on the bend here. So right here seems to be a great spot. It causes a nice sort of slow sinking. Not when you pull it and stop, it doesn't nosedive. It sort of like continues and has a slow downward trajectory, not really a jig action. So these are small. If you wanted the jig action, then I would put heavy ones on, not the, these are the small ones. So they don't weigh that much, but it's just enough to counterbalance this plastic rattle of back here. Um, so once I get those set, again, I come in with some super glue just to really make sure they're in there. Then I'm going to take my, uh, come up to the top here. I'm gonna take my section that we made, right? And there is, I did tie it so that there was a top and a bottom. Make sure you know which side is the top and which side is the bottom. All right, and what I wanna do is lay that right like that, just like that. And maybe even a little closer. However you lay it, Oops, there we go. Um, make sure it's sitting where you want it to sit because once it's in there, it's it's in there. You know, there's no getting it out. So I want it to be nice and tight. That looks good. And I'll work back to the bend of the hook. Come forward. Now, this is pretty stiff. So, you don't need to worry about it wiggling all that much when it's back here. 
It doesn't have a lot of action because it's stiff. There's not much room for it to wiggle because the loop is so small. Um, but that, boom, how's that look on that side? That looks great. But that is how we put this middle section. And what you want it to do essentially is the bottom half here, you want it to sort of fuse with this silvery part here, which we have here. You see how it kind of fuses here? Um, so then what you're gonna do is take each strand and pull it back. And again, I guess I've said this 9,000 times, but this is a musky fly, so I really make sure that all my tie-in points are secure and everything is super glued up the wazoo because, you know, they're musky. Um, again, there's no hook on the back section here, so, um, so I'm not too worried about them pulling this off. So here I'm going to add some super glue to that tie-in point. Um, the mono, the reason I use mono and not steel is because the mono, like, I don't know, plastic welds with the super glue, it just, it's so secure. So, so secure. All right, get rid of any excess. And I'm gonna let this dry, so, all right. So, it's pretty dry now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another clump of white bucktail right here, and I'm gonna try to get it so that it's angled equally with the shank here, um, and this, you know, 45 degree angle. So what I do is I put my tips of this just right after this little bump, because what tends to happen is the thread tends to slide down when you tie this in. So, I come in, I do three loose wraps, and then I'm just going to try to get it around everything. And then I'm gonna pull it tight after I get it 360 degrees around, which I think I have almost done. There we go. And you might need to work the fibers around here, around the eyes. But you can see, I think, there we go. I have the angle that I want right there. That's that, that starting angle. And the, uh, the eyes are starting to get covered up. Now, is it a big deal if the eyes are covered up? I, I don't think so. You know, you'll see it at the end of the pattern. They, they get covered up quite a bit. But I like to be sparse with this one. Um, because I don't want to take up too much room going forward. Grizzly hackle fibers. And I'm gonna tie in one over the top. So it kind of lays down over the top. Just like so. And I'm kinda, I want it to lean on my side for this one and then when I do the other one, which you'll be able to see better, I want it to lean the other way. Beautiful. So they should split. Let me see if you can see that. They should split the hook right down the middle. Um, so get those in. I'm going to come in with some flash. It's that same flash and I'm going to go eh, like 70-30. 70% back. 30% out front, and what I'm gonna do is flip this back. So that looks decent, right about there. Again, be conscious of moving forward. You don't wanna move forward too much. Choose your fingernail to just kinda spread the fibers out. I say I have more red in this front section just cause it's more prevalent. But work your way back, and then once you think you're good, bring those other fibers back. Sometimes I'll put them on the bottom, um, but for this one, I just want it to be on top. For a few reasons, oops, don't do that. All right, how's that look? Pretty good. So it gives this nice counter shading to the bottom because the bottom is gonna be very white. Um, and this flash, which I don't, you know, I don't know if you can see it very well, but it, Gives a nice counter shade. All right, so now we are tight on space. So this, these next parts are, be delicate. So here I have some red, and we're gonna try to go all the way around. 
but we're gonna do a bullet tie. And there's not a lot of fibers here, you know. So I'm gonna put my tips, basically so they're over the flash, so they keep the flash at this angle. Spin your thread clockwise. I'm gonna go three wraps. Then I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna pull it tight. Try to get a 360 degree spin, which I think I got a nice one there. And again, I'm working backwards now because I don't want to crowd the eye any more than I already have. So I'm gonna use my fancy, super fancy hollow tie tool, which is a Bic pen. And let's see here. This is where you can adjust some fibers. That's actually very good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep pulling it back till I like it. And then I'm just gonna go right over where I am. And I'm gonna pull down and hopefully it spins just a touch. And there is just a very, very sparse collar of red. That's it. Super sparse collar of red that goes all the way around. That's all I want, all right? So now to keep these fibers from flying everywhere, I'm gonna try and hook them back here. So, and we have that same trajectory. See that trajectory that we're following? Perfect. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie in, this is ripple fiber, and I want it to basically go back, you know, 50-50. So they come in these sort of long strands. I'm going to put 50-50 on each side and I'm gonna to try to spread them out a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. There we go. And these will be of many different lengths. So they make this just a really cool, like, not an eye, but kind of an eye. Or a gill, I guess. A gill, I would say. So I'm gonna to need to roll this up real quick. All right, so this is kind of what we have. It just makes this nice, ripply, flashy side and kind of covers up the eye there. So, now we're very tight. If you want, you can put some super glue on here, which I absolutely should because, well, it's a musky fly. <laughs> um, okay. So, I'm gonna let that dry actually. All right, so I have let this dry, and what I've done is I've blended some black and red deer hair. Now, you can be really messy in this last little section because we're gonna put eyes over it. You know, little secret. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the fibers down, get them as close to like where I want them, and then I'm just gonna come over them one, two, three times and I'm gonna try to do another collar all the way around. All right, looks pretty good on that side. Looks just okay on the other side. How's that look? That looks pretty good. Does that look good on your side? Yes, it does. A little heavy on the black down here, but not too bad. If you don't like it, or if you want to add in some other colors, like on this, on my side, you guys can't see it, but it's missing out on the red aspect, I would say. There definitely needs to be some more red. There's nothing wrong with grabbing a very small clump of deer hair and just simply cutting it up and tying it in. If you're not super happy with it, don't force it. So I'm just gonna add in a little red on this side. Okay, now I'm gonna clean up the tips. Hang on. We are gonna come in with some long, extra long peacock. And, and I want the peacock to be almost as long, if not as long as the entire fly. So what I'm gonna do is come in the top. I got my fibers. Try to space them out a little bit so they're not all clumped together.
Okay. Cut the tips. Now, you are all done. And this front, this actually looks fairly good, but it doesn't even need to be this neat. It can be messier than this because we are going to put eyes on it in one moment. All right, so now I haven't put any glue or anything on it just yet, but I'm going to put a drop of super glue and then I'm going to just drop my eye on it. Once I get into the position that I want, this is where you can kind of change these if you want to match an angle. Um, I come in with some, this is solar as thin to start. I'll finish with something else, but. Um, so I'll just make sure that everything's, this is just really for positioning. So I'll just make sure that my eyes are roughly in the right position. Let that soak in. The reason I use thin to start is because it soaks in really well compared to like the thick. You know. So I just wanted to show you something. That's gonna be it. I'm just gonna do that and make it pretty. But those lead eyes, gone, right? Everything is gone. I mean, it's amazing. This, this um, you know, this fly is really amazing. What happens is it essentially stays like this. It really doesn't get any more, you know, thin than that. It pretty much stays like that, so it stays thick. But a fish will come, bite down, and then boom, that hook is exposed. And that's how it works. Um, so I hope you like this tutorial. If you have questions about it, please feel free to ask. Check, uh, check us out on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Main Fly Guys. Um, yeah, and just, you know, be a part of the conversation. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you want to see. We love talking to fishy people, so join our community. So thanks for watching, and uh, we hope to see you next time.